Mabuhay, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Welcome to DepEd TV. My name is Sir Pao, your Techie Teacher in Technology and Livelihood Education. Today, join me as we develop your life skills in Information and Communications Technology or ICT. To those watching us via Facebook Live, do not forget to post a picture of yourself while watching and use the hashtag ILOVETLE. Make sure that your post is public. And also, please observe proper netiquette. Netiquette means network or internet etiquette. Do not forget to be polite and respectful at all times. Avoid posting file or hash words. So think before you click. Be ready, get your pen, paper, and self-learning module. Then let's begin with our ICT journey. Welcome back learners. I'm so happy to see you again today. Let's have a recap of our previous episode about preparing and interpreting technical drawing flowchart. To do this, let us call our teacher from the future, Teacher Ali, to give us the review. Thank you, Sir Pao. In our previous episode, we learned how to create a flowchart, the elements of a flowchart, and the uses of a flowchart. A flowchart is commonly used by system analysts to visualize the series of processes in a business system. It also shows processes in sequential order. The different flowchart elements are as follows. The terminator. It is represented by an oval. It appears at the start and at the end of a flowchart. The process. It is represented by a rectangle or a box. It represents an individual step or activity in the process. The decision. A diamond represents a decision. A process that needs a decision of yes or no requires a decision box. Arrow lines that are drawn in one direction, preferably from top to bottom, keep a flowchart clear. We read a flowchart by following the lines with arrows from shape to shape. And this is an example of a simple flowchart structure. Flowcharts help us to understand the sequence of a process. It can be used as a tool for training and can help us identify problem areas. I hope you had fun learning flowcharts. Back to you, Sir Pao. Thank you, Teacher Ali. See you again later. The television, radio, computer, microwave oven, electric fan, flat iron, and other electrical appliances are made up of electronic circuits. An electronic circuit is composed of individual electronic components such as resistors, transistors, capacitors, inductors, and diodes connected by conductive wires or traces through which electric current can flow. You may have conducted an experiment about making a simple circuit in one of your science classes. A simple circuit contains the minimum components needed to have a functioning electric circuit. And they are as follows. Source A source is a device used to supply AC or DC voltage. AC means alternating current and it comes from an electric power source or generators, while DC stands for direct current, which we can get from batteries. Consuming devices A consuming device is any device that consumes voltage. It is a component or piece of equipment that is connected to a source and draws current from a source and is a load on that source. A light bulb is the most common example of this. Controlling devices A controlling device is a device that has two states. On or closed, and off or open. Ideally, it has zero impedance when closed and infinite impedance when open. 
A light bulb switch is an example of this. Protecting part. A protecting part is a component that is used to open the circuit when the current exceeds a predetermined maximum value. Examples of protecting parts are the diodes, resistors, capacitors, transistors, relays, integrated circuits or IC, and inductors. And the last component is the connecting material. Connecting material is material that conducts electric current very well and it is used to connect a complete path for the current. A very clear example of this is the copper wire. To work with electronic and electrical circuits, a beginner needs to acquire special hand tools and equipment. Each of these hand tools and pieces of equipment does one or more specific jobs in connecting, replacing, securing, and troubleshooting electronic circuits. In doing so, a beginner should first learn how to use these hand tools and equipment and where to use them before we can start to build or assemble simple circuits all the way to complicated ones. There are two categories of electrical hand tools that we will learn in this episode, the hand tools and diagnostic tools. The hand tools are the following. The hand tools can be manually used by employing force. Moreover, the diagnostic tools are the following. The diagnostic tools are used to discover what is wrong with faulty connections that do not work properly. Let's play a game. Let's play TLE game. Name the following hand tools that will be flashed on your TV screen. Correct! That is a flathead screwdriver. A flathead screwdriver is used to loosen or tighten slotted screws. Let's have another example. Perfect! This is a Phillips head screwdriver. A Phillips head screwdriver is used to loosen or tighten cross head screws. Here is another tool. Correct! That is a Torx screwdriver. A Torx screwdriver is used to loosen or tighten screws that have a star-like depression on the top, a feature that is mainly found on laptop screws. Let's have another tool. You are right, a hex driver. A hex driver, sometimes called a nut driver, is used to tighten nuts in the same way that a screwdriver tightens screws. How about this picture? That's correct, a needle nose plier. The needle nose plier is also known as the long nose plier and it is used to hold small parts. And our next tool is... Very good! A wire cutter. A wire cutter is used to strip and cut wires. What is the name of this tool? Perfect! A wire stripper. A wire stripper is a portable handheld tool used by workers, especially electricians, for removing the protective coating of an electric wire. How about 
this tool. Perfect! An overhead flashlight. The overhead flashlight is used to light up areas that you cannot see well. Show us our next tool. Correct! A soldering iron. A soldering iron is a device for applying heat to melt a solder in attaching two metal parts. A soldering iron is composed of a heated metal tip and an insulated handle. And here is another tool. Very good! A soldering iron stand. A soldering iron stand is a place where the soldering iron is placed during usage. This will keep the soldering iron away from flammable materials. Let's have another example. Correct! A desoldering tool. A desoldering tool is used in removing soldered wires and components on printed circuit boards for troubleshooting and repair purposes. Let us have some more tools. Can you name the following diagnostic tools? Here is our picture. Correct! The answer is a multimeter. A multimeter is used to test the integrity of circuits and the quality of electricity in computer components. Another picture, please. You are right! A test light. A test light is a simple electrical device that you can use to see whether a circuit is carrying current. And the last picture is a... Perfect! A circuit tester. A circuit tester has a series of lights that shows the wiring state in the outlet so the technician can verify that it has been installed correctly. In electronics, there is a process called electrical termination. A wire termination is the work performed at the end of a wire that allows it to connect to a device. The wire insulation is stripped and the contact terminal is attached to the wire. Have you ever done a science experiment where you made a simple circuit connection? In electronics, we call that process electrical connections. Different electrical connections can be found around your home. Electrical wiring connects to switches, outlets, appliances, disconnects meters, and circuit breakers. Soldering is one of the basic skills that we must learn in computer system servicing. It is the process of soldering wires into electrical connectors, splices, and terminal logs. Cleanliness is essential for efficient, effective soldering in the soldering process. Why? A solder will not take effect on dirty, greasy, and oxidized surfaces. Connections to be soldered should be cleaned just before the actual soldering operation. Items to be soldered should normally be tinned before making a mechanical connection. Tinning is the coating of the material to be soldered with a light coat of solder. In our first episode, we already discussed safety and health at work. 
We call that Occupational Health and Safety or OHS. OHS is about knowing and controlling hazards and risks in the workplace. These hazards and risks may cause death, disability, injury, sickness, or great discomfort and inefficiency among the workers. There are three steps used to manage health and safety at work. 1. Spot the hazard. Get to know what is unsafe in the workplace. A hazard is a potential source of harm. It can be in the form of substances, events, or circumstances that can cause damage to health, life, property, or any other item or value. 2. Assess the risk. What could happen? Risk is the chance or probability that the person will be harmed or experience an adverse health effect once exposed to a hazard. For example, electrical repair is a hazard. If someone accidentally turns on the power, a worker's life can be put at risk. 3. Safety Hazard A safety hazard is something that can cause immediate physical injury or damage. Health Hazards Health hazards are things that can cause illness or diseases over time. The following are the primary causes of health hazards. Inappropriate and defective tools, unguarded machines, and electrical hazards. Now that we have learned the concepts of terminating and connecting electrical wiring in an electronic circuit, let's make a two-gang extension cord. Teacher Ellie, Please tell us the material that we need to prepare the making of the 3 meter 2 gang extension cord. In, In making, making a 3 meter 2 gang extension cord, you will need the following materials. A 3 meter 16 AWG flat wire, one heavy duty male electric plug, one 2 gang or double outlet, side cutter or wire cutter, wire stripper, screwdrivers, long nose pliers, test light or circuit tester. Here are the steps in making a 3 meter 2 gang extension cord. Number 1. Split both ends of the flat wire using side cutters and strip off the wire insulator using the wire stripper for about 3 fourths of an inch. Number 2. Using a screwdriver, unscrew the male electric plug and open its cover. Number 3. Insert the wire into the male plug. Tighten the screws down to hold the wire securely. Cut the excess wires if needed. Number 4. Return the cover of the plug so the wire will not be exposed and cause electric shock. Number 5. Repeat steps 1 to 4 on the other end of the electrical wire, this time with the 2 gang electrical outlet. Number 6. Test using a test light or a circuit tester if the extension cord is working. Number 7. Enjoy your new extension cord. Thank you, Teacher Ellie. In making this 3 meter 2 gang extension cord, we only spent 49 pesos for the 2 gang female outlet, 34 pesos for the plug, and 115 pesos for the 3 meters of the 16 AWG flat wire. That's a total of 198 pesos. Compared to the available ready to use 3 meter 2 gang extension cord in the market, this is a steal. You can use this extension cord when charging your cellular phones, flat irons, microwave ovens, and television sets. It has a higher heat resistance value of 60 degrees Celsius compared to the ones in the market with a 40 degrees Celsius heat resistance value. It means this is safer and won't burn easily even with prolonged use. I hope you had fun learning about terminating and connecting electrical wiring and electronic circuit. Once again, here is Teacher Ellie for the recap. Thank you, Sir Paul. 
Today, we learned about strip kits and the different hand tools and diagnostic tools to be used in electrical installation, such as the screwdriver, pliers, wire stripper, overhead flashlight, wire cutter, multimeter, test light, and circuit tester. We also learned how to identify the hazards in the workplace and we got to know the different types of hazards, the safety hazards, and the health hazards. For the application part, we were able to create a safe and affordable 3 meter 2 gun extension cord which you can use at home. Back to you, Sir Pao. For our next lesson, we are going to dive in into more lessons and fun activities about testing electronic components, part 1. You can still watch the replay of this episode on YouTube. Just search for Deput TV Official. Have fun! Once again, I'm your tech teacher, Sir Pao, saying, Quality education will be achieved when one is eager to learn and is innovative. In TLE, there is life. Together we learn as one. And this is DepEd TV. Hashtag I love TLE. <laughs>